I think when you're called to big destiny, you need to practice um, the gifts that you have and get really good at that because Proverbs says it's your gift that'll make way for you. Mm. And so you might not have the influence or favour just yet, but um, you need to develop the skills that, that you have. And so make, look at that, um, that vision or that prophetic word and think, who do I have to become to be able to fulfil that word? because then you'll start doing habits that align, daily habits and adopt a lifestyle that starts moving in, in that thing that you need to be. Welcome back to Revival Chats with Renee. It's so great to have you with us. If it's your first time tuning in, welcome. Um, we're in for an absolute treat today with someone who I think is fascinating. He's a prophetic coach, actually the prophetic coach, which we'll find out more about. He has a background in business and um, he's really in a unique space. So he's patient, he's humble, he has a heart to equip and set others in good stead, which is really empowering as well. So it's my absolute delight to introduce you today to my friend, Paul Robertson. Hi, Hi Paul, welcome. So Thank great you. to have you with us today. Thank yeah. you for coming and joining us. So first of all, what is prophetic coaching and how did you get into that? Yeah, prophetic coaching, essentially, or well, the, the way I approach it anyway, is essentially uh, helping people bridge the gap between prophecy and fulfilment. And the way I got into that was totally a God thing. Um, I was a manager of a health and weight loss retreat at the time and um, I had people prophesying over me about uh, you're supposed to step out into prophetic ministry and that sort of thing. So eventually took some pretty big risks um, to the point I actually sold my house wow. and put it on the market and um, told my bosses I was uh, going to leave that job and gave them notice um, that I was going to leave and yeah, pretty much stepped out and stepped into prophetic ministry without even knowing what it looks like. And um, yeah, as soon as I was committed in that process, um, a business guy um, I, I bumped into at a conference uh, one time, I got to prophesy over him and we ended up going out for lunch um, in one of the breaks and um, he said, oh, so what do you do? And I said, oh, actually, I've just stepped out into prophetic ministry and I don't even know what that really looks like just yet. And he goes, oh, it was a bit more conversation than this, but he pretty much said, oh, would you come into our, our business and, and prophesy over our business? And it sort of started from there and um, developed over time, um, just as um, God sort of gave me more vision for what I was doing mm. and uh, got trained as a life coach as well. Awesome. And um, yeah, that's a short story. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love how um, it's it's so fascinating like with what prophetic coaching, it's that not just life coaching or mentoring, but having that life-giving element of prophecy to, to add to it as well. Yeah. So I, I love that. Um, and also having prophetic beyond the four walls of the church, like what you talk, you're in business, doing prophetic in business. So sometimes we can get bit boxed in, I think, in our thinking mm. of what prophetic looks like and get a bit of a pulpit mentality. But I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what you see with the purpose of the prophetic and, and the different spheres of influence. Yeah, I, th I think the prophetic, depending on the context and um, it, it can, I mean, the role of the prophetic can be quite different depending on what you're called to specifically. Mm. Um, for me, myself, um, a big part of the prophetic is equipping and um, I think there's a bit of a difference between the gifts and say a call of the prophet, like I feel called as a prophet and um, a, a big part of being a prophet is not just prophesying but also equipping. Yeah. Um, and so for me, um, the, the prophetic is going out, um, helping people discover what they're called to, um, like identity, knowing who they are, what they're called to, how to go about it. Um, and yeah, really being confident in what they're doing. Yeah. Mm, that's yeah. awesome. So do you have um, some common things that you see 
in people that stop them from walking in the fullness of what God has for them? Uh, definitely. I'd say the biggest, biggest one is uh, either procrastination or passivity is the, the biggest ones I see um, wow. across the board. Now that's, that's people in business. That's people not in business. Um, anyone who's had a prophetic word, see lots of passivity, mainly because people don't know what to do with the words that they've been given. And yeah. yeah, that's so true. And um, that's what I was going to ask as well. Like, um, See, we can typically spend a lot of time training people on how to hear God's voice or how to give a prophetic word, but there's not a lot of emphasis often given to what to do once you receive a prophetic word. So what's some of the things that you kind of um, would break down a misunderstanding of prophecy and what to do when you receive a prophetic word? Like what are some of the steps of what you would yeah. advise people to do if they receive a prophetic word? And they're like, oh, yes. You know, because sometimes it can be, um, I, I don't know, I notice that sometimes a prophetic word is given to someone and that really activates something within them. But then for a lot of other people, even in a high level prophetic culture, they doesn't matter how many prophetic words they receive, that nothing really seems to get legs on it. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, totally. I'll mention a couple of things. First thing comes to my mind is um, the sower and the seed um, is such a great example of uh, prophetic words being spoken. Uh, a lot of people read that verse and think the word of God just as, as scripture. Right. And the way I look at that verse is um, it talks about the seed being the word and so for me the word is any way God wants to communicate to you whether that's through a dream, a vision, prophecy, um, situational types of things, um, scripture as well um, but the many different ways that he speaks and being able to value that word and let it um, take root in your heart. So the very first part of prophecy is you need to let it take root in your heart um, weighing it up is super important. I think um, the body of Christ has got to get better at teaching people how to weigh the word up so that they can be confident in knowing whether it's God speaking or not. So many people not quite sure if it's him mm. speaking or not. And we need to get to a point where we're certain in what he's saying so that we can go after it. Because what happens when you're certain, you can actually let that word sink into your heart but take root because what if you read that whole parable, it talks about how, you know, the seed fell on, you know, rocky grounds and it, it didn't take root basically and the birds come and pick it up and take it away. And that happens to so many people just because they don't let one weigh it up properly wow. to be able to take, take root in their heart. Because once it takes root, um, you, you go quite on a journey, especially if it's a big word that's going to take uh, most of your life to fulfill. So, um, yeah, it's super important weighing it up um, properly, but then I think doing something with it. Um, too many people get worried about what to do with it and don't do something. It can, right. um, there's this thing I, that really frustrates me that gets around in the church and it's really poor teaching is the shelf. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard yes. someone, oh, I'm not sure what to do with that. I'll just put it on the shelf. I, I don't know if you've heard yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely but have. I've, I've heard it and it's quite common. And there's, there's nothing wrong with the shelf if you've got a good um, view on what the shelf is. But most of the time, and I'd say 80 to 90% of the time, I meet people and it's more I've just chucked it out the door and waiting mm. for God to, you know, um, send a lightning bolt from heaven to spark that word again. And, um, yeah, uh, the problem with the shelf is a lot of the times it's passivity. And a good example of that in Scripture is um, the parable about the talents. And he gives, the master gives out the talents and gives a different amount to each person. And the master comes back and he's annoyed with the guy who didn't do anything with it. But it's interesting in that whole parable, he doesn't actually tell them what to do specifically with it and mm. expects a, um, there's an expectation of fruit um, from what he'd given them. And I think it's the same with the words um, that you're given. So if you go to back to the sower and the seed, at the end of that sort of parable, it talks about that um, he wants you to see a 30, 60 or 100 fold increase of fruit um, from the word that's initially planted. Mm. So 
Um, you'll also notice another parable about the wise man and the foolish man. The wise man builds his house on the rock. The foolish man builds his house on the sand. And if you read that, he goes, those who hear my sayings and do something with them mm. is like the wise man building his house on the rock. But wow. he says um, to about the foolish man, those who do nothing is like building his house on the sand. Again, he doesn't say what specifically they're to do, but there's that expectation that they need to do something and respond to the words that have been mm. given. So I, I think in that process, um, people are generally scared to be able to step out on the words because they just don't know what to do. And mm. um, what I love is because I've been coaching for about six, seven years now um, in this this realm of the prophetic is um, we, we've literally see the common um, problems that people come to face and um, we've sort of even come up with a, a, a coaching program around going through all those things, um, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Oh, my mind is blown <laughs> by how much is in those relating to prophetic words and all those parables that we've heard a million times. Yeah, but yeah. That, that really ignites something in my heart too. Um, so, yeah, how about weighing prophetic words? We just wanted to go back to what you said about that. So do you have some um, tips that then of thinking of how to how to weigh a word with the, against the word of God? Like yeah, to yeah, totally. Um, I think discernment something um, we need to grow in um, mm. as a as a body of Christ. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that gift is probably um, un undervalued. Maybe I don't know if that's the word, but it's not used mm. enough um, or moved in enough. Uh, mm. I think. Uh, Hebrews 5, um, the last verse in that chapter talks about exercising your senses to discern between good and evil. Mm. And it talks about exercising your senses. And for me, when I weigh up a word, I really um, tap into what my senses are saying. And there's also lots of um, teaching out there about don't follow your feelings, don't follow your emotions and that sort of thing. And Generally, they say that because people follow what's happening in the physical realm or the natural realm. Mm. And what I would say is I'd agree with them on that aspect. Mm. But when you exercise your senses to discern between good and evil, you're actually tapping into the spiritual realm. And so sometimes it can be very similar what you're f feeling in the physical yes. to what, what, what's happening in the spiritual but when you grow in discernment, you begin to determine what realm you're, you're picking mm. up on. And I think just practice in ec exercising your senses so you know the difference between the nat natural realm and, say, the spiritual realm. So for myself, I ask myself, like if I'm tired, I ask myself, Am I tired because of my natural circumstances? So I ask mm. myself just natural questions. Have I slept? Yes. Ha have I been eating well? Have I exercised? Am I, you know, doing all the right things that would help me, you know, um, be energetic or whatever? And if I know that tired feeling is not matching up, um, I suppose my physical realm, then I start going, okay, well, maybe this is something spiritual. Mm. And when it comes to um, discerning like whether a word is from God, a lot of the time, one, I'll ma match it up with scripture. So I write my words down or record yeah. them. Yep. I pray into them um, and I, I meditate on them um, because if it's a word of God, it says to meditate on the word. Mm. And I think we've got to meditate on any word that we feel is from him. Yes. So scripture's one, but that's not the only way God speaks. And so we need to meditate on what's being said. And I think as you do that, um, you look at your word that you've written down, but um, some things I love to study in scripture is the character and nature of God. And in his three kind of different identities, so the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you'll notice that scripture actually says specific things about the different characters um, of God. So I think there's over 300 and something different characters slash natures of God that he's named throughout scripture, just God himself. Mm. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot in there. And I think as you study that and learn his nature, when you write down something on um, like your words down on paper, you, you read over them, you meditate on them, but you'll start to notice that the character and nature of what's being said 
really yes. matches up to the character oh. and nature of God. And, and um, But another thing is too, when you read the nature of God and you exercise your senses to discern, one of the biggest things I can tell if a word's on or not is the peace I feel. Mm. And Scripture talks about Jesus being the Prince of Peace. And so I know, um, and Philippians talks about his peace that surpasses all understanding and knowledge will guard our heart and our mind. So I know if I get a prophetic word and it seems a bit out there because I can't get my logical mind mm. around it, I, I don't look for trying to make it make sense in my mind. Mm. I look for that peace that surpasses all my understanding and my knowledge and make sure that it guards my heart and mind because that's a characteristic of how um, Jesus likes to move and he's the Prince of Peace. And when you exercise your senses, you start to pick up on those things because sometimes if the word doesn't make sense, people go to their physical realm and go, that doesn't make sense, that must be wrong. Or I can't see the picture. But the problem is if someone's prophesying into your life, say 10, 20 years down the track, it could mm. be, look completely different to the space that you're in currently. Right. So. And I love looking at um, Old Testament prophets. They, they prophesied out of their, their lifetime. Mm. And so it's, you can't base a word on what you see now because so prophecy is about speaking into the future. And um, I think, yeah, getting to know the character and nature of God's the biggest one, but also exercising uh, your senses to discern between good and evil. Yeah. yeah, that's so good. I, that even really resonates with me. I know mm. with prophetic words that I receive, you're putting language to stuff that <laughs> I, I do, but you're giving a, a great language to explain it and, and know that, yeah, you're doing the right thing with your prophetic words. So for me, it's the same thing. Like you, you get this sense, you get this feeling about something, even though it's way outside of its time or whatever. But another thing that it does is um, enable you to kind of then see opportunities that do come and then you can partner up because you don't often get to where the prophetic word is saying that you're going to be doing or what what the space that's going to be in straight away like there's so many other steps to get there and if you're looking for that one big thing that might never just come across your path there might be all these little tiny steps along the way right to yeah, totally, to yeah. get to that so um I think that that's just absolutely incredible um so stewarding prophetic words that's what I kind of is getting at with that as well yep. so um yeah, you, you've talked about that a little bit already, but how maybe if you could just talk about what you think about with stewarding prophetic words, like what I'm talking about with things, opportunities that might come your way, but then knowing how to step into that because it's a word, so you could, you've got the okay to, to pursue that because yeah. God has spoken. Yeah, totally. So I think um, once you've gone through the weighing up process, it's super important because you need to get a, to a point where you're certain whether it's him or not. Mm. If it's not him, throw it out. Don't need, it doesn't need to be a taking real estate in your mind so or your heart. Um, but if it is from God, then you actually got to value that word because if it's him speaking, then you want to be obedient to that and take responsibility for what he's given you. So, um, yeah, you really need to value the word. And um, I think in, in that process for me, I know I've got to do something. If he's spoken, that means I usually got to act. And mm. I think there's this unhealthy thing about um, confirmation. Um, I, I believe we've got way too much confirmation before people step out. And um, I think it's sometimes healthy and wise to get confirmation. But if you know it's God, you shouldn't be seeking for more confirmation because that mm. shows there's doubt that you believe the word. So mm. that might mean you have to go back and weigh that word up a bit more or haven't so gone, gone through that process properly. And generally people, I, I find there's different types of words we get. So, I mean, you, you get people like Noah who gets all the steps of the process of building the boat and, it, you know, mm. this bit of wood needs to be this long, you need to do this to get to that. Um, but, you know, somewhere on the journey you had to have a faith step as in, mm. you know, he's building this thing and they've got no concept of what a flood would look like in, in those times because it never had happened. So he eventually would have had to, you know, be building this boat with no idea of what the, the end picture would look like. Mm. But then there's other words where you get, say, an aspect of a word, but you don't get all the details. So for me, I was just told I was going to do prophetic ministry and that's mm. all I got. 
And, um, you know, I asked for more. I didn't get any more. And I, I just got to a point where I was so frustrated. To, to be honest, I didn't do anything with the word until I just got so frustrated of getting, I, mean, I, I probably would have had 20 or so words of people going, you need to be in prophetic ministry. And, and it was weird because the only way I'd seen it demonstrated was through a church sphere. Yes. And my church sphere at the time said, there's no room for you, basically, in um, pretty direct sort of terms. Or <laughs> well, they, they said, get, get in line. And, and they meant well. And so I was like, well, God, if you're saying this, then I need to align with it. And I think, um, yeah, confirmation can be really unhealthy. And why I say that is because Hebrews 11 talks about um, you have to have faith to please God. It's mm, impossible, Im so good. impossible to please him without faith. And so this confirm, confirmation mentality is actually moving in doubt and not trusting mm. in, in his word. Like, I mean, the disciples got um, torn to shreds all the time. They'd see this miracle happen. Then, you know, he'd get them to do it again. And he's going like, guys, didn't we just go through this, yes. you know? And it's almost like we're constantly needing that confirmation. But I just encourage people to take a step, step of faith towards mm. that thing. So yes. like for me... Um, like early on, I was, you know, I had a word of being called to be a prophet. And at that stage, I didn't even know what a prophet was. Wow. So there's just like straight away, there's steps you can do. Like I went, okay, what's a prophet? Mm. I need to find out what that is. What do they do? Mm. Um, and get an understanding of what that was. So I, I knew I had to do some training. So there's natural, there's Prophetic words might be, you might get simple things, but they lead to clues of what you, you need to do. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're called to be a doctor, generally if you haven't got the skills or qualifications in that area, you need to do training. So mm -hmm. that, try and think of just simple things where you can step closer mm -hmm. to that, that thing. But uh, every different prophetic word should give you a clue. And, um, yeah, you need to do something, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, I think... What I teach my business clients is we get prophetic words, get them to weigh, that, weigh it up, but then we actually make a plan to pursue it. And mm. it's interesting, Proverbs talks about um, commit your works to the Lord and he'll establish your thoughts or some other versions um, say it a bit different, but commit your way to the Lord and I don't know, he'll make your ways succeed, so, something mm. along those lines. I might be mixing up different versions with each other. But um, there's a few different scriptures in Proverbs that kind of, I don't know, are in contention with each other because another one says it's his purpose, uh, many of the plans on a man's heart, but it's the uh, purpose of God mm. that will succeed. And then there's um, yeah, the, the one. The Lord will direct his steps. But yeah. Yeah the, yeah, the man's purpose is in his heart, but the Lord directs his. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so... It's both ends I've found, like sometimes it's a bit of one, sometimes it's a bit of the other. So what mm. I get people to do is if you can discover what the purpose of God is, so generally those clues can come through prophetic words or dreams, visions or any way he speaks. But I try and discover, okay, what's your purpose, Father? Because I know that's going to succeed. And so I go, all right, um, and prophetic words are usually a target of what that thing is. And so if I can articulate that the best I can, then I know where I'm heading for. Mm. So what I do is make a plan or get my clients to make a plan to align with that thing the best they can and make a plan of um, coming back to what they have in their hands now because prophetic words, especially if they're big, can be overwhelming and mm. you get people who... Uh, aren't in the area of influence or level mm. of influence they need to be walking out that. And it gets so, so overwhelming because where they are. Mm. And it's like, you know, like I've had words of, oh, you're going to have influence to the hundreds and thousands and stuff like that. But they're, at that time, it's like I'm at, um, I was living in a place by myself out in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And I'm like, oh, cool. So... <laughs> Who's my influence at the time? But mm. um, I just started off doing what was within my hands. So the the guy with the one talent, you just take that talent and instead of burying it, you go, okay, what can I do with this? Mm. Um, how can I be faithful with it? Because if you understand that 
um, the principle of being faithful and stewarding well what you have will bring mm. multiplication. Uh, like mm. you'll bring multiplication yourself, wow. but when you bring multiplication, God honours that, then he brings this supernatural multiplication and just mm. sends it through the roof. So um, generally I, I get a word, I try and articulate it best I can and make a plan towards it but I commit it to God. So before I step out and do it, I go, Father, this is what I'm going to do, unless he's given me something. Mm. But if he hasn't given me something, I go, okay, Father, this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. I commit it to you. But then I I give him time to speak back because I think when you're committing a plan, you don't want to be so doing your plan that you forget to hear God in the Mm. process. And that whole thing about committing your work or your way to the Lord and he'll establish your thoughts, the second part is super important in that process. So once you've committed your way in aligning with that purpose that you feel he's called you to, um, you then basically you, you commit it to him, but then you wait, for give him some time to speak back. And usually if I don't get anything back, I act on what I've, I've put mm. in place. And usually when I act, that's when I start getting confirmation yes. that I've actually, I'm in the right place. Yeah. I, I remember when I sold my house, put it on the market and left my job, um, I was really struggling because there's a lot of teaching out there about follow your favour. And that's great if you're following God's favour. But um, favour can also be the biggest distraction of keeping you away from stepping Mm, into your destiny because I had to actually take a back step um, in not getting paid any money, um, all these things which can look like favour at time Mm. to pick the harder road of something I didn't even know what I was doing Mm. and, and yeah, basically put all my money on the line and, um, Yeah, so it was interesting. It wasn't until I stepped out that um, God spoke to me in one of my quiet times with him and goes, blessed is the man who believes before he sees. Yes. And he took oh, he, he, he took me to that that passage. Is it Thomas puts his finger in Jesus' side yeah. and wants the confirmation? Yeah. And that's where confirmation's really bad. Mm. We get into that Thomas mentality and I've just got to see the next step or whatever before I act upon it. Mm. And um, I really believe Jesus, he, he can do both, but it, it's knowing when, um, mm. what season you're in, I suppose, in, oh, is he going to give me the next steps or do yeah. I need to commit? But if you're not getting anything, you've got to do something with it. And, mm. um, yeah, so commit your plan to him. Uh, wait, act upon it and keep listening for the feedback because it's not like it's a constant feedback too, mm. like I'm – what, uh, six, seven years along from when I first stepped out into uh, prophetic ministry and I still um, check in with God, like, are we still on the right track? Like, And mm. he'll, he'll, most of the time he, he just gives me um, little altercations of what to do. He goes, that's really good, but how about we just change that a little bit? And mm. it, it's, I just find it helps so much and, yeah, it's been so fruitful and, yeah, it's helping a lot of people as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that really resonates with me. I know even with doing doing this, that's how it wasn't like I you know, sat down with a pen and paper and was like, okay, I'm going to plan to do to interview people or to, to, to start revival chats with Renee or something like that. It was literally a word spoken over my life yeah. that they, they saw me on a TV screen, media, you know, different words like that. And, yeah, taking those taking what's within your heart and going, yeah, okay, I'm going to take a step into this, but you don't know where it's actually going to end up. You're going with him on the journey along the way. So I just think that's so powerful and so so encouraging to other people as well so they can find themselves somewhere in what you're talking about along the journey themselves and go, oh, yeah, no, that's where I'm at or no, that's where I need to be at or that, you know, how to, okay, now I know how to get to where I need to go more obviously than what I did before. Mm. So I just wanted to talk a little bit as well about setting goals. Like you kind of talked yep. about that as well. Um, just because we have a desire to, to do something doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Prophecy isn't fortune telling. So it's not like what you're saying, just going to come and, and happen. We have to steward it and everything like that. So how do you practically set some goals to move things from a dream to reality? You've talked a little bit about that, but maybe um, just, yeah, with individuals specifically as well of um maybe some steps that they can practically take today even to um, 
yeah, to start having the, the, the things that within them move to reality. Yeah, totally. So I think there's many different types of words. So um, understanding um, what type of word you've got given because sometimes God gives you a word just to show you something of the future where you don't have to act upon, mm. um, but he wants you to know. So, I mean, Daniel had these incredible, um, I don't know, encounters um, where he's told about like end time sort of stuff. But the angel at the end tells him to seal up the word because right. it's not his time. So um, good. So in that encounter, he he didn't have to actually do anything with it. It was for him to to know, uh, you know, some secrets that you know the father mm. obviously wanted to give him through that. But he didn't. He was told what to do with that. So he sealed it up. So um, he didn't have to do anything. But there's lots of words we actually have to do stuff with. And what I try and tell people is prophecy gives you clues and um, it also understanding it gives you part of a bigger picture and um, I try and pull all the parts together as much as I can and get as clear as I can on the end picture. So I try and get people clear of, um, I don't know, like right at the end of your life if you can. Like um, Jesus got to the end of his life and it's interesting in John chapter 17, verse 4, he says, I've given you glory by finishing the work you gave me to do. So mm. it's interesting he says that before dying on the cross. So he had a measurable picture mm. of what the work was to be able to say it was complete. So if we can somehow put ourselves um, as far down the track as we can, Sometimes that might only be a week for some people. Mm. Sometimes that might be all the way to the end of their life. But as far as you can, so you, you can and articulate that end point as best you can or that, that point, whether it's a week or two, um, if that's as far as you can see, um, just articulate that the best you can. But then what I tell people is work back to what you have in your hands now mm. because you can't do you can't work out of what's in your hands. Like, I mean, or you might need something else, but at least you'll know what to pray for or intercede mm. for to uh, into your moment. But usually you have exactly what you need. You're in the right place at the so right good. time, but you've just got to discover what that is. So um, if, you know, you're called to, you know, preach to hundreds and thousands, bring it back to now. Do you have anyone to preach to? Yeah. Like, so I mean, um, I heard uh, a lady, she had no one to preach to, but she had a cat. So she started yes. practicing on a cat. And I think when you're called to big destiny, you need to practice um, the gifts that you have and get really good at that because Proverbs says it's your gift that will make way for you. Mm. And so you might not have the influence or favor just yet, but um, you need to develop the skills that, that you have too. And, um, yeah, but setting goals, yeah, find uh, an end picture or a target that you can aim for. doesn't matter how far it is, but just get a target. Um, know what you're aiming for. Come back to the current time and say, what do I have in my hands now that can head me towards that thing? Mm. Yeah, so pretty good. much. And try and make identity-based goals as opposed to, um, uh, fun function goals, mm. I suppose, like in I've got to do X, Y, and Z. Think about who you've got to be when you're at, at that um, end point because um, another thing, I believe um, identity is not just static. So static would be we're sons and daughters of God. Um, we're, we're that the, the moment we're born, we've always been that and called to be that. Um, but also there's... Um, more moving type identities that we, we have. And what I mean by that is when you're an infant, you're an infant. But as soon as you hit your teens, you're no longer an infant wow. anymore. You're a teen. So you no longer go under that old identity of being an infant because you're a teen. Mm. But then that progresses to being an adult. And then if you become a father or a mother, it's an, it's a, an identity of who you are. It's not just something you do. It's a part mm. of, um, it comes from who you are. And so make... Look at that, um, that vision or that prophetic word and think, who do I have to be, um, who do I have to become to be able to fulfill that word? Because then you'll start doing habits that align, daily habits and adopt a lifestyle that starts moving in, in that thing that you need to be. Because 
essentially you can set goals and do these things, but once you achieve them, you just got to set another goal. But however, if you have a goal set around your identity, it just becomes what you do as the norm every day. So, you know, um, I know I'm called to be a prophet. Um, so I know prophecy is going to be a big part of my life. So it's a part of my everyday lifestyle. It's not just something I do. It mm. comes from who I am. And um, I think that's super important. It's um, probably easier than setting goals. But some people like to think in goals um, as well. I've noticed I'll try one thing on one of my clients and they just don't think that way. Wow. And that's okay. And trying to work out what works for you best. And sometimes um, setting small goals is um, a way to go as well. So what you do in that circumstances, you've got the, the vision or the picture of where God's taking you. And you take it back um, to now and just go, okay, what's what's the 90-day goal I can make to take me one step closer to that thing? Just break your vision down into easier mm. steps. So you're called to be a prophet. Mm. Um, what do I do with that now? I, you've got to ask yourself, where am I currently? I'm not, I don't even know what a prophet is. First goal would be find out what yes. a prophet is. You know, then second goal, okay, I need to get training in that and, yeah, just make steps like that. Mm, and yeah. I think too, because God's outside of time, so we can put goals and measures on things, but he's outside of time. So, the, yeah, there's different, it's a whole different paradigm of how he operates with that as well. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm, um, I think that you have such a wealth of wisdom. I'm getting so much out of this. I know everybody <laughs> that is listening or watching today, it just, ah, oh, so you can feel the fire in it and the passion in, in who you are in, um, yeah, really encouraging people. So I, I'm oh, so set on fire with what you're talking about. Um, I was wondering just quickly if you have any testimonies of how the prophetic has impacted businesses or individuals, um, yeah, in, in seeing even the decision-making or yeah. planning or anything like that really. Yeah, well, lots of stuff. So um, heaps of different miracles we've seen. So um, first business I stepped into, um, the... There was two people running the business. Um, one was a Christian guy. The other guy was um, he'd sort of, I don't know, fallen away from God, I, I suppose. I didn't um, actually meet him in person, so I just heard about him, but went and prayed into their business and spoke into their business prophetically. Um, and a couple of days later, he gives his life back to Christ, starts oh. going back to, to church and there was nothing really in that apart from his partner said to me like something really happened for him to mm. suddenly change because that was out of the blue and the only thing we can put on it is when you came in and prophesied over our business. Wow. And um, they they changed. Um, from there I saw another business. I went in there, I didn't know what was happening with their business. They're actually going to quit within the week, which wow. I, I didn't, didn't know. And I without going into the, all the details of it, um, just because it's um, confidential some of it, mm. but I'll get, give you the outline. Yeah. But I, I gave them um, a word of you're meant to be here, also had words of knowledge of what they'd been through because they just needed to know that I was hearing from God because they, mm. you know, they're open to the prophetic but they, didn't, they weren't really sure of what they thought about it. But then I actually gave them a strategy too and it was, it was challenging for me because I said, you need to take this Friday off and have a rest day. Like, don't come into work, go home, yeah, I know, do whatever you want on your rest day, but you're not to work. And, you know, the business mentality, oh, we're not doing well, we need to work harder. Mm. And they took the day off and um, they actually came up with all these solutions that really impacted their business because they had a day off of work. And they actually found that they, their staff worked better without them there than when they were there. So they realised that that surfaced some problems oh, as well. Incredible. But the crazy thing was within half an hour of me speaking into that business, they landed their highest paying job within the five years um, that they'd been in business. Awesome. And a week later, they landed their second highest paying job with nothing to say apart from God spoke in at that moment. And what I love about the prophetic in business, it's not just what you say, it's the grace that you release for people mm. to step into once you've spoken. And you literally saw that in that, that occasion where they got breakthrough like almost instantaneously. So, yeah. That's outstanding. And oh. now, now they've got a couple of businesses from that now too. So that's 
five, six years ago, I think I gave. And they were about to quit that week. And they were going to quit, yeah. It's amazing. (laughs) I love it. I could sit here and chat with you all day. I have to get you back. It's absolutely out of this world. You're so fascinating and just, yeah, I I think you're just such a, a, a... the brotherly shepherding heart that you have to steward people into the call of God and the pursuit of Him for their life and their business is just absolutely out of this world. Um, Yeah, really championing you and everything that you're doing and the prophetic coach. So I might actually tell our viewers and listeners, um, you can head to thepropheticcoach.com.au and also Paul has a free ebook that you can download to get you started on that journey too. So please, um, if you've been really encouraged by today, jump on board. He's also on all the social media platforms as well um, with The Prophetic Coach. And yeah, jump on in it and get involved and be encouraged to step into your prophetic destiny and all that God has for you. So until next time, see you.